taking a risk has gotten much easier for me. And like you said, um, a lot of it boils down to getting over a lot of those fears and getting over the limiting beliefs and having a team. Now we're just in the process of expanding it in completely new ways. I don't think I would have ever taken the leap like that out of the blue mm-hmm. unless I knew how to hire somebody and how to bring somebody onto the team. Welcome back to the show. I have a really funny different type of episode for you today. It's a little bit uh, more entertaining. There's a lot of stuff that goes down. There's uh, salsa. There's Katie busting out a Busta Rhymes rap. (laughs) There's us making very inappropriate jokes and just like dying laughing. Literally our sides were splitting. It was hilarious. And Katie gives us a tour of her boudoir studio, which is so exciting. And I know for those of you that you know, have had this dream in the back of your mind of like, oh, wouldn't it be nice if I could have a studio or like, what would, what would that even look like? How would I set it up? Like, oh my gosh, you are going to be so excited to see her space. So this episode is definitely better to watch on YouTube. So if you are listening to this on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever, uh, I would suggest like pausing this right now and just going to YouTube and watching it there because it's definitely much more entertaining. Maybe watch it on the side while you edit. This one is um, has a little bit more like chill vibes. And this is because Katie is actually um, a guest that's coming back on the show. She's one of my OMI students. And she shared her full like story of burnout and how outsourcing literally saved her quality of life and relationships and just took her quality of life and her business to the next level. That's all in episode 122. So if you really want to hear that kind of like first part, I would, if you're like going to be, you know, spending a lot of time editing right now, or maybe you have a long drive, I would suggest go back to episode 122 first, listen to that. So you really get to know her and her story and where she was. And we recorded that a year ago. And then when I saw earlier this year that she had opened up a second boudoir studio and she was just killing the game. I was just like, oh my gosh, okay, let's do a where is she now updated podcast episode. And so a lot of the like main key points uh, we mentioned in episode 122 on like what helped her and like the transformation she went through and she dives into her burnout more in that one. But in this one, we still cover that, but it's just like a year later. And this one, I just felt like keeping the vibes like light and fun. I kind of went went with the flow with this one. And Katie is just like the best to do that with. She's so much fun, so hilarious. And I really just wanted to, because she lives so close to me, like maybe 45 minutes away from me, she has her studio there, Um, not where she's living, but she has her studio about 45 minutes away from me. I was like, oh my God, can we record this in person? So it's us actually hanging out in person, recording the episode, and then we do a tour and the tour is amazing. You're not going to want to miss it. So uh, yeah. And oh yeah. And before you continue on to play this episode. Um, I do want to just share quickly that registration for my upcoming free live masterclass that I only host once a year, so you don't want to miss it, um, is open. And you can go to sarahmonica.com forward slash masterclass to grab your seat, register. If you have ever felt burnt out in your photography business, or if you're on the cusp of it and you're like, you hear all these stories about photographers getting burnt out and you just don't want to get to that point. You want to totally avoid it. This masterclass is a must attend. Like you do not want to miss what I teach, what I share, all of my numbers of how much I spend on outsourcing, how much time it saves me, the four secrets that you want to make sure you know to help you actually outsource effectively. Um, And even for those of you that attended the masterclass last year, I would still say sign up and register because there's, I can't even tell you how many times I re-listen to podcast episodes. I re-listen to lessons and courses because what I've come to realize after all these years is that repetition is the mother of all skill. It, It doesn't work to just listen to something once and then um, oh yeah, then we just know it, right? Like we, o- the only way we get really good at photography is through practicing, through repetition, repetition, re-listening, relearning, retrying something else. And especially with new knowledge that isn't that isn't like part of your daily routine. Um, the more you listen to it, the more it becomes understood by your subconscious mind. The more you start taking on 
um, the identity of someone who is like, yes, I actually believe in this way of running a business and I want to run my business in a more effective way where I also get to enjoy a personal life that I'm not just, you know, the bottleneck of my business chained to my computer. Nothing gets done unless I work, right? It's just not a sustainable way to live, to work. And so whether you've attended the masterclass before or not, it is a must attend and it'll be so great. You get to connect with me, ask me questions directly, connect with the community, and you're going to learn a ton. And at the very end of the masterclass, I will go into uh, letting you all know what is included in Outsourcing Made Easy, what the transformation looks like. Um, I'll tell you stories of past students as well. Uh, but yeah, I will be inviting you into Outsourcing Made Easy. But the amazing thing is, and I totally stand by this, every single person that shows up to the masterclass, whether they end up signing up for OMI at the end or not, they're like, that was so value packed. Thank you. So because I'm big on maximizing our time and I totally respect your time and I know your time is valuable, whether at the end you sign up for OMI or not, you will not regret signing up for this masterclass. So um, yeah, so head over, join, uh, go to sarahmonica.com forward slash masterclass. Uh, while um, it's still available, the sign-up window is, is well, the dates are going to be October 23rd, 24th, and 25th when I'm hosting it. Um, so there's three separate dates and times to choose from. And if none of them work where you can um, show up live, make sure to sign up anyway, because then I'll be able to send you a replay. And it's best to show up live because you get to ask me questions. And there's an exciting show up live bonus, which is literally a private audio feed from other high earning successful photographers in the industry answering this one question, which is what do all photographers need to know to be successful in 2024 and beyond? And each of these incredibly successful photographers shares their answers and it's gold. And I think it's just such a nice way to like reset and like be like, okay, this is what I'm going to focus on in off season. So those of you that show up live to the masterclass will get this automatically, like as a bonus. And um, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, this isn't available anywhere else. It's not like a freebie anywhere else that you can get. So you only get it when you show up to the masterclass. And then I'm also going to be giving away some extra fun goodies. And one of them is valued at $600. So you definitely want to show up live if you can re rejig your schedule if you can, but if that's not possible and you can't show up live, sign up anyway. At least you'll get the replay. At least you'll get all of the juicy knowledge um, available to you and you get to watch it while you're editing or something. And you won't, you won't need to miss out on that. <laughs> you won't get to, you, you won't miss out on the learning. So yeah. So that's it. Go to sarahmonica.com forward slash masterclass. You can also click the link in the show notes. And for now, enjoy this fun episode with Katie. Katie, put yes. the penis shaped microphone closer to your mouth, okay? <laughs> yes, it's on. Are we, are we on or are we on on? <laughs> yes, <sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> oh now that you God. said that though, I literally can't unsee it. So we are, uh, it's happening. But again, like you said, best thing for a boudoir studio. It is a perfect conversation for uh, for a boudoir studio. You're in the right place. For, Especially for that, with for what sure. do we have behind us here? What's it called? We are, um, if you peek around the corner behind Sarah here, we uh, we have my sex swing over there. So There's just going to be references We're, today. Yeah, I would say if you have any kids in the room, maybe kick them out. <laughs> maybe, maybe get rid of them for the day, you know, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's... It's an interesting place, but a fun place. So. <laughs> Can't wait for the tour later. Oh, yeah. You haven't even seen the whole place no, yet. No, so I haven't. You guys get to come along for Sarah's like grand reveal exactly. of, of the studio. But first, to start, okay. this is a total surprise to Katie. She has no idea. So I re-listened to the episode recording last year because I'm like, I need to have it fresh in my memory. Like, where was she at exactly with all the details? And I remember asking you the three random facts. <laughs> And you're like, I am all about party tricks. Like, yep. number one, I could say the alphabet <laughs> backwards. Uh, for you guys to hear that, you have to tune into episode 122. So mm -hmm. if she does that there. Um, you can also rap any Busta Rhyme song on demand, which is pretty exciting. <laughs> and then also you love dancing and like bachata and all of I that. Do. 
I so do. because we're recording this for YouTube, this is gonna, the best spot to like tune into this one today is YouTube for sure. Oh, God. So can you like lead me through a little dance? Oh, uh, <laughs> my God. No. Okay. Okay. Are we dancing together? Because like, it's kind of like a partner thing. Do you here. feel like leading me? I can lead a couple, a couple footsteps here. I'm not okay. a professional at this. Okay. I do it for fun. No, I know. And I it's do it when I had like three tequilas in me, but we will, we will try. <laughs> Check this today. is just for fun because I love dancing too. Okay, so I'll, like, I'll show you some footwork. I'll okay, show you some footwork. Let's do it. Okay. Oh my god, girl, I'm in a full-on suit. I'm in a. <laughs> Had I known this, I would have worn my sunset outfit. But you know, okay. Let's do it so, this way. You got to hold hands, okay. and then okay. Yeah. I will be the man here. I will be. <laughs> well, you <laughs> have the suit, so it's perfect. It's kind of on par here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't even know because normally, okay, so yeah, he would go back then. So you're going to follow my feet. One, two, three. Yeah. And then back. One, two, three. And then you kind of do that one, two, back and three. forth. There you go. So the man's one, two, always taking the lead. When it comes to <laughs> and you just got to kind of follow along. And then you put your hips into it. And then you make it. Yeah, see, you the girl. Oh, wait, you take this off. You can see my hips. <laughs> <laughs> you got the natural move. Here, here. Look at you go. Okay, okay so we're going, we're going back. And then this. And then you move the hand. And then you go back like that. And then yeah. I didn't have a chunky jacket on right now. You just did it. You just keep that. You're the man. So I am the man. So then I'm never usually the man, so I gotta figure out how to be the man. But he would actually. Yeah. And then he would lead. So you're going back like that. And then if we're going forward, how would I spin you like that? But you're still doing the feet while you're doing it. Oh, so yeah. We're going back. And then spin. There you go. See? And then oh my God. See what awesome. I mean? Like it's yeah. all, it's all, once you get the footwork yeah. down, you add in a little hand. So I think you got it, right? Yeah. We'll, go, we'll go from the beginning. Okay. Ready? <laughs> from the beginning. We're going to go. Back. And then forwards. And then we're going to go back and then spin. Okay. And then keep going. There you go. You got it. I, that was so backwards for me. I'm like, okay, normally I start with this, but what would I do? So. Not awake enough for that yet. <laughs> Well, that's what I was going to ask next, though. Oh, my God. Can you do a bust up? <laughs> Can you bust out a bust up? Oh. Rhyme. Okay. <laughs> Ten seconds. Feeling, okay. Because I'm feeling like I'm running and I'm feeling like I got to get away, get away, get away, but I don't, and I know. But I know that I don't and I won't ever stop because, you know, I got to win every day, day. They don't really, really want to pop me. Just know that you will never drop me. And I know that I could be a little cocky. You are never going to stop me. Every time I come, I got to set it. Then I got to go. And then I got to get it. Then I got to blow. And then I got to shut it. Any little thing you think you're going to be doing because it doesn't matter because I'm going to, and then I'm going to murder everything. You think about a boom, but if it got to a lot of things, I can't. That was so cringe. It's so cringe. Anybody who's known me my whole life. My whole life yeah. has heard that probably 50 times and we'll be at parties and they'll be looking at me like, here she goes again. She's, she's Busta rhyming again. Oh. <laughs> and that's the tequila, right? Oh, definitely. <laughs> definitely. When I did destination weddings, um, there yeah. were a bunch of guys in the, in the groomsmen um, or the, yeah, the bridal party. Yeah. And they were all kind of like, you know, they were rappers and they did their thing. And I'm like, guys, I can rap. And they're like, no, you can't. And I'm like, watch me. Oh, this is and so it was good. a whole thing. So I have rapped all over the world. <laughs> <laughs> my like three Buster Rhyme songs that I do really know. So. <laughs> but yeah, that uh, never a dull moment. Oh my gosh, <laughs> exactly. That's why I love you. And that's why I knew you'd be up for it. Absolutely. On the spot. Always, always. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now we get to actually catch up after literally just getting warmed up with that amazing. fun ass time. Oh my gosh. Like <laughs> so fun. I was, I was not expecting to salsa today, but I, I will say it was a good yeah. time. So. <laughs> Thank you for that. Or rap Buster Rhymes. Oh, yeah. But I mean, the ones who know me are not surprised. <laughs> yeah, that, not so surprised. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so, okay, where do I even start? I mean, I think where I want to start is where my mind goes to right away is I remember you saying last year that you were literally in the transition from transitioning from only photographing weddings to then also taking on boudoir, and then you were doing them 50-50. Yeah. And so... Where are you now with that? Like, I am completely done with weddings. Wow. And I never thought I would say that. Um, but yeah, I had my last two this year, um, just little short, intimate ones, and that was it. And if I'm being honest, I thought I would be a lot more emotional ending that chapter, but I feel very at peace with it. So oh. um, I am full-time boudoir. I am still doing families and couples and all that, but um, weddings, not so much. I'm being very selective. If I take it on, it's going to be a very 
low-key intimate elopement style but yeah we're pretty much <laughs> out of the wedding game for now so oh my gosh yeah. mm-hmm. and oh uh, that like to me that's so like courageous in a way for you to like listen to those intuitive hits and that pull that you had within you because it could be so scary to leave behind something that did feel so fulfilling and exciting at one point and then it's like being like okay am I actually done with this or is this just a chapter am I gonna regret this like Mm -hmm. how did you know for sure that that was the direction you wanted to go in oh I went back and forth (coughs) a hundred times by the time I actually came around to making the decision I weighed the pros and cons you know and I literally wrote it out on a piece of paper pro con ran numbers ran everything and um I I came to the conclusion feeling very at peace with it because like I said in my last podcast too um where I'm at in life right now I feel very aligned with what I'm doing helping other women and uh, I've been on my own little journey for a while. We'll touch into that a little bit later. But um, it, it just felt right for me in this moment. Not to say I will never do weddings again. I, I still get people ask me, they're like, Katie, will you like sneak in my wedding? And I, yeah. I'm open to it, but I'm not promoting myself as a wedding photographer anymore. Yeah. Sticking mainly to boudoir right now because that's just where I'm at in life. So um, yeah, coming to that conclusion, it took a lot because it was my identity, right? Like mm-hmm. I, I knew myself to be a wedding photographer and people knew me as a wedding photographer. I still get 20 inquiries a week come through for weddings. Oh my gosh, like, I bet. <laughs> oh my God, I'm not even promoting them and they're still coming through. So people know me as a wedding photographer and it was a beautiful chapter and I loved it so much. But after COVID, I don't know what shifted in me. Um, maybe the fact that, you know, everything kind of got shifted and moved around and and energies were changing regarding weddings. And it was like, nobody was enjoying the process anymore. Everybody was Mm -hmm. like, I'll take a Wednesday wedding because it's all I can get. And we're fighting over a date and like everybody was just on edge. And I'm like, I just didn't really like the energy when, when it was towards the end of it. So, um, yeah, I, I made the decision and I'm very happy with what I did. So. That's awesome. I think it's, I think it'd be very fitting because you explained it so beautifully last year of like, why you feel drawn to boudoir Mm -hmm. and what kind of gift you want to give women and so maybe tap into maybe explain that to those listening of like so they can have a better understanding of like why you're like yes this is so in alignment with me like what's your why around that my why is um my whole life I always struggled with insecurities and not feeling good enough or not having that confidence. And I've been that person that has been very, very, very insecure. And to this day, I still have some, but we've, we've made strides and I'll touch on that a little bit later too. But, um, I've been that woman who hated what she saw in the mirror, hated. And I'm now at a place in my life where I accept who I am, flaws and all. And, um, I feel very, again, at peace with who I am as a person. And, To be able to go through one extreme and then come out on the other side is a really beautiful journey. And the fact that I have the power to help women get to that point in their lives too is incredible. I mean, our client the other day came in so nervous and and I just saw it in her. She's like, I can't do this. And she's freaking out and she's running back and forth and going to the bathroom and she's scared and she's like almost shaking at that point. And by the end of it, we're hugging her. She's crying. She's like, you changed the way that I saw myself. And I remember driving home that night and I, I was, you know, just driving up the axis going home. And I'm like, holy, like the fact that I... I can do something that I love, which is art and photography and um, creating images it, and also change somebody's life doing it is incredible. So that's amazing. Yeah. And I like I see how you create that for other people by the way you also market your services through literally like getting re- reveal footage of them reacting to seeing their photos for the first time. Mm-hmm. And it's so powerful. Like I tear up. Uh, what you share and I think that has so much to do with how you've been able to grow so quickly Mm -hmm. and a hello I can't wait to talk about the second studio like what is like I can't wait I mean let's just talk about it now (laughs) all right let's let's dive into it so what like okay you had a you had a studio last year and that was were you uh, sharing that with someone I was and I do actually still have it okay perfect Mm -hmm. okay Mm -hmm. so you have that space Mm -hmm. And then what even, what came to mind for you to be like, let's expand. Let me get another studio. I outgrew that 
place really quickly. I was to the point where I was buying so much lingerie for the closet. Um, and I'm like, I have nowhere to put it and I am losing room and I want to get new furniture. And it, it was a great studio space and I still have it. I still love it. Um, but I needed a little bit bigger of an area to bring the vision to life. And I really wanted clients to come home or feel like they were coming home when they came to the studio. And mm -hmm. you'll see when we take you on the little tour, um, it is like a house type building so it does have that homey feel to it um and it's beautiful and my other studio it was in a shared building we had a bunch of different um businesses in there they were all very sweet but I wanted it to feel a little bit more private mm -hmm. due to the nature of what I'm shooting so um I actually have somebody that I am sharing my old space with right now she's awesome um she specializes in like cake smashes and mm -hmm. families and stuff like that and it's the perfect space for that so um it's still there it's not totally gone but uh, I, I focus mainly working out of here now so amazing and I love how you're so in tune like something that I find so impressive is your attention to detail with the like client experience with the human experience that you create I feel it like even you thinking <laughs> as far as you know this is like the building we're in right now I, it is like homey I actually walked in I was like oh studio but it does I had that feeling of like hominess I'm like why do I feel like really comfy in here mm -hmm. and like but it's still elevated and beautiful and like wow like magical at the same time and mm -hmm. yeah you thinking of that it's those details that I think have really like helped you consistently over the years to grow so much so quickly so it's I just have to say that because that's so thank impressive you. <laughs> thank yeah. you I will say it's a blessing and a curse oh, um, yeah. being <laughs> such a perfectionist mm -hmm. you know it's great when you need it to come into play but sometimes I'm just like I wish I wasn't this picky about things but um, it, it does make the whole experience for everybody better right and I wanted a place that when you walked in um, you Wait, just bring you, bring the 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 what's it called what did we call it again the uh, the Oh, <laughs> what's it called? Eggplant. Let's just call it an eggplant. Bring the bring, bring the eggplant, eggplant mic closer to your mouth, please, Katie. This is close enough. <laughs> Did we record that whole thing? Because if not, people are going to be like, what are these two we, talking about Oh, right shit. Now? I don't even remember if we did. Okay, so pretty much, so you guys know, I don't have, I rarely do in-person podcast recordings. So I don't have these like pro stands. So we're holding our mics. And I'm like, Katie, you're going to have to hold your mic close to your mouth because otherwise we won't hear you. And she's like, oh, fuck, I talk with my hands a lot. <laughs> she's like, just kick me if it's too far you away. Me. I'm going to be like, no, no, no. I'm just going to say, take the penis shaped thing closer to your mouth. Because, <laughs> you know, you know, sexual references always make things more fun. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I like coming on your podcast because it's so unfiltered. And I'm like, yeah. I can be myself here. <laughs> yeah, <good>. Exactly. <laughs> what were we talking so. about? <laughs> I don't know. It's okay. <laughs> okay, so let's just let's just I mean, go the to studio, the studio. The studio when I the opened stu the oh, studio. Oh, you're like it's a then, blessing and a curse. Yes. Oh, to be a perfectionist. Oh my god. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I I kick myself in the butt sometimes for it because do you know what happens? I will go back and forth on decisions over and over and over again. And then I, I get so fed up with not being able to decide on something mm. that I just don't do it. <laughs> so there are so many like unfinished projects in my <laughs> life, in my house, in here. You'll see there's like um, light fixtures that I haven't changed because I literally can't pick one that I like. So I, it's a blessing and a curse. Sometimes it drives me and everybody in my life a little chaotic. Yeah. But, you know. <laughs> I think a lot of photographers can relate as artists. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if we bring it back to you know, the whole topic of like outsourcing and how you've been able to yep. grow to this point. How can you explain maybe how you've managed to like move through that perfectionism? Mm -hmm. It's like, it's still a part of you and you're keeping it because there are pros to it. Right. Yep. But then you've figured out how to like eliminate the cons of it and like let those limiting beliefs go which is very interesting so like if there's a photographer listening to this and they're like hell no am I getting support in my business because no one could do shit as well as I can I don't want them to touch my baby like <laughs> what advice would you have for them where you're like but no you can't actually get stuff done really well still <laughs> with help this might sound a little backwards but um, no one will ever have your eye, uh, no matter what. You can mm -hmm. train somebody as much as you can. They're not going to shoot or edit the same exact way that you will, but nobody is ever going to pick up those little tiny pinpoints that you and I would looking at somebody else editing our work or mm -hmm. somebody else shooting for us. Um, so when you let go of that fear of nobody can do it like I can, because oh I had I had that 
tenfold I remember (laughs) very vividly (laughs) on your couch oh yeah Yeah. I had that moment I'm like nobody's gonna do it like I can um and I finally let go of that and it has brought so many wonderful things to my business giving up certain aspects that I thought people couldn't do um like I could and um, I don't know if you want to get into it now but Mm -hmm. I'm even bringing on an associate photographer this year so that is a massive step to trust somebody with your business so um it's it's helped me a lot by getting rid of that limiting belief like Mm -hmm. you said um and knowing that as long as it's getting done if that five percent isn't perfect nobody's gonna notice but you and I think you said something uh in our last podcast too where perfectionism doesn't even Mm -hmm. exist it's it's in the eye of the beholder yeah so you think your work is perfect but could I pick a point or pick apart certain things I would change of course you're gonna Mm -hmm. do the same thing to mine and um perfectionism is only internal right so when a client thinks it's perfect you might not think it's perfect and you have to just let go of that it's subjective so it literally it's not like for someone to be like oh that's perfect it's like okay it's perfect in your eye um so it's like beauty is in the eye of the beholder just like perfection is in the eye of the perceiver Mm -hmm. and I love that you pointed that out and I think that's what you said last year you're like what I realized is 95 percent perfect to my standard Mm -hmm. and with someone else saving me those hours and doing that 95 percent how I would oh that is so worth it because I get my life back I get my well-being back and I can always quality check it and fix the five percent which takes me no time exactly yeah so it's like they're doing the heavy lifting exactly and we're doing the fun part Mm -hmm. reserving your energy too right yeah you exhaust so much of it as a creative person you know um it it can be very limited sometimes and when you have that little bit of creativity you gotta (laughs) hold on to it and protect it and not really you know do the mundane part that anybody can do with the right training so exactly that makes me that reminds me of like moments where I have so many creative ideas for even just marketing my business yeah and I'm able to actually follow through with them I have so many freaking ideas that I'm actually able to only follow through on like five or ten percent because they're just flooding my way but I remember when I was overworked and burnt out I had so many ideas but I actually couldn't even do the five or ten percent I could only do like 0.5 or one percent because I didn't have the time or the bandwidth to execute especially nowadays with reels taking more time it's like that to market your business is like if you want to do it that way it's like three times takes like three times more time to even more Mm -hmm. than just to put a post up yeah but I'm not saying putting posts up doesn't work actually it still really does take away the pressure of creating reels but I'm saying if you are feeling pulled to doing reels and that excites you you need more time on your hands and you're only going to get it if you get support um okay so I'm excited I think this is a perfect segue because like let's talk about the support you do get Mm -hmm. and um maybe do a quick like like sparks notes for those that didn't listen to last year's episode Mm -hmm what were you getting help with last year like kind of like a quick list item Mm -hmm. and then where are you now how has that changed if if it has how has it expanded and where are you going with it um so long story short when I implemented the things that I learned in your course um a lot of it was focused around VA and having a virtual assistant and she was amazing and I loved her so she was like just a little angel I loved her so much (laughs) um and she she did really well with helping but then when I opened my studio I realized oh no I need like an in-person person and she was nowhere near me she was virtual so I was like okay maybe I should think about getting an in-person assistant. So I went through that whole journey. I had no idea what I was doing. To be honest, I still don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm winging it. (laughs) You know, Um, and I I had one come in with me and she was lovely and awesome. And I kind of just threw her my email backlog. I think I had like 300 emails or something at that point. And I'm like, help me, please. (laughs) And um, we just, we tackled it together. And that was a big learning curve for me. And Um, you know, eventually she ended up getting full time at the other job she was working. So she ended up leaving and I'm like, okay, back to square one. I got to find somebody again. And, um, then I had another assistant with me, but then going into that, um, round of having an assistant, I had a little bit better of a game plan, but still very, very not used to being a boss. I never wanted to be a boss. Let's just throw that in there. (laughs) I like being my own boss. Um, I'm still learning how to be somebody else's boss. So, uh, that is a work in progress. Yes. (laughs) But it always Um, is just as we are always a work in progress as photographers exactly. it's a new skill that we exactly. yeah, are learning exactly um and then from there we had some 
uh, changes. I had my brother's girlfriend helping me out for a little bit. She was amazing, but I knew she wouldn't be long term with me because she was going to school for teaching. And I'm like, I know I'm going to have to say goodbye to you one day and I really don't <laughs> want to. Um, yeah. And so now we have a new team, which she, she's doing awesome. If you, you met her earlier. Yeah. So um, we're, we're doing really good with that. So in a sense of the assistant aspect, I still have my in-person assistant. Mm-hmm. Um, she does all of like the admin for me, the booking, um, keeping the studio organized and uh, helping the clients when they get here. And she's just basically like my right hand woman that (laughs) yes I can be chaotic sometimes so yeah having them just be like okay we need to do this we need to do this like I I really benefit from having that person in person um and then as for the team aspect I just mentioned I am bringing on an associate photographer so um he will be taking over a lot of my lifestyle stuff the Mm -hmm. couples and families and outdoor sessions so I can focus primarily on the studio that's amazing that's huge yeah huge huge (laughs) okay let's talk more about that but first I just want to mention it's like um having someone in person especially a hundred percent for sure when you have a studio space it's like like even just like like Katie was on her way here today and she didn't have to worry about like greeting us at the door and then making us like getting us water or anything like we just opened up the door Danica was here amazing and then me and Katie are chatting getting ready for the podcast and then Danica has her back making her coffee like Katie doesn't have to be running around in the back being like okay I just need to get a coffee and it's like no that's taken care of and it's just those little tiny things that help with like our bandwidth even for even decision making each day um are like peace and our capacity to just like be more present and calm Huge. and mm-hmm. uh, it's the best and I don't know if you you, oh, you, you don't know this so I can tell you some Ooh, news too okay. so literally I think it was like four weeks ago now um Rory and I because I knew I had this upcoming season of like wedding season yep. plus the Omi launch which does like a huge project each yeah, year it I takes bet. so much effort oh my gosh, I <laughs> but <can> I <laughs> but I love it but it's it's huge but one thing is that I didn't want to sacrifice how many people I could help and reach mm-hmm. um and I didn't want to sacrifice how much time I got to spend with Rory and my mm-hmm. son this like at the end of summer the beginning of fall like such a great time of year and so I was like, I really want to put my head down and give it my all for this Omi launch, but I don't want to sacrifice shit. And then I'm like, Rory, why don't we hire like a personal assistant to help with literally just anything like cleaning the house, cooking, um, running errands, doing grocery runs. And I'm like, what if we just try it out for two months just during the season of time so we're not overwhelmed? It doesn't affect our lives. Mm -hmm. And he was down for it. Mm -hmm. I found I like posted a job posting exactly how I teach in Omi how to put together a job posting posted it in a local Facebook group and some people replied they're like uh are you nuts like you're looking for a personal chef a a house cleaner like personal assistant they're like good luck and I'm like oh damn like these limiting beliefs are like prevalent (laughs) people don't really realize but someone I knew it. I knew if I put out the exact details of what I wanted, they would show up. Three days later, we found Katie. Her name is Katie, oh. too. You're in good hands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we found Katie. Oh. And, like, she it was the perfect gig for her. All we needed was, like, two to three hours a day, five days a week. So about 10 to 12 hours yep. a week. And someone else would be like, well, it's not even part-time hours. Why would anyone want that? Yep. But it's literally perfect for where she is with just how she wants to make extra cash right now. And... I can't even tell you. I thought I was like not ready for that. I'm like, personal assistant, who am I? Like, yeah, yeah, right. And then I'm like, oh my God, I have so much spaciousness. Like the weekends where I'm not shooting, where I am shooting a wedding and then we have the Sunday, I no longer have to do groceries, catch up on cleaning. We get to just go outside to like Chudley's with Ben and hang out with him. And that's all done for us. And that is fucking priceless Mm -hmm. (laughs) and Mm -hmm. so seeing you have that experience in person too now I'm also like I kind of get it now (laughs) because like now I have that support and we're gonna see we're gonna see like do we want that we're probably gonna cut it down for in the winter yep but we don't need it as much but I'm like oh but this is gonna be something that's gonna be coming around the horizon for like to be there more often because I just want to do the things I love like this like Mm -hmm. connect with you connect with other photographers and help make an impact so yeah and it gives you that freedom to do it too exactly yeah it's funny you say that um I was actually looking into it a few weeks ago for an organization company to come into my house because as much as I have the business side of things organized now um I am not an organized person at home I am quite the messy little human (laughs) being I'm not gonna lie um you know 
ADHD moments where just like, okay, I pick something up, put it down, forget about it. And I'm like, oh, there is a tornado in here that I don't know how that happened in five minutes. So I've realized and I've come to terms with it. It is just not a skill of mine. I have or something skills. you care to get better at. Like, you know, I've tried. Okay. I, have tr- I have watched all the YouTube videos. Yeah. I have listened to all the podcasts. Um, on how to live life more productively and organize and it, ju- it just I'll do it for like a day and then I'm over it so yeah. I've realized okay this is not my strength um, and same thing too like I had a supportive partner and he's very much like you know maybe you should outsource that part too and like you know and I was like yeah but letting somebody into my house and I remember I felt like I did when I first started doing this type of outsourcing and I had those Mm -hmm. limiting beliefs like oh my god is she gonna judge me for how messy my house is or is she gonna judge me for this and 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 you know getting over that hump and even putting out the email to her um was a huge step for me too so yeah that's actually next on my journey and it's funny that you bring that up because I'm like okay it worked for Sarah we'll see we'll see (laughs) yeah and there's always just those humps yeah and we're ready sooner than we think yep. usually yep. right yep. like would you say like oh shit I would have started sooner oh. with outsourcing if I just knew 100 <laughs> if, if yeah. do you know how many bookings I probably have missed out on back in the day um because I would take so long to answer them back and I think I told yeah. you in the last podcast too emails are not not my thing Mm -hmm. um they take so much mental energy from Mm -hmm. me that I just can't like I would stare at them and I would sit down at the computer ready to go I'm like yep I'm gonna type out all my emails today and I I wouldn't even be able to get through one because it took so much brain power and certain people don't get that you know and I don't expect a lot of people to understand that but it was a big challenge for me just to be able because you have to be on in the Mm -hmm. email right and some days when I'm working from home I don't want to be on I just Mm want to edit and like listen to some music and like not have to talk. And when you're in email, you got to respond and have that professionalism to it. So um, when I outsourced that whole side of it, um, that really, 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 really my stress. So. <laughs> Actually, I think <laughs> more time. people would understand that more than you think. And I, yeah. I think I, what I want to mention is like this concept I've recently heard from someone I'm like really looking up to right now. She's like mm-hmm. my expander right now. Her name is Andrea Crowder. Mm. And she, has this whole idea of running her business as like the core value is that anything that feels like pressure Mm. is a no like it and pressure feels like push I need to push I need to push myself to do it just like you were explaining I'm gonna just push through these emails right and she's like that's a no for Mm -hmm. me I'm gonna figure out how to eliminate it or delegate it right if it feels like a pull right like photographing shooting getting Mm -hmm. creative um podcasting like anything Mm -hmm. then that's pleasure Mm -hmm. that's excitement that's dopamine yes (laughs) dopamine oh yeah (laughs) that's shit you can get from a sex swing or shooting photos like (laughs) take your pick pleasure (laughs) give me that pleasure hell yeah girl (laughs) you haven't even seen the other thing the whole bondage that's okay yeah we're going on a tangent again you need to watch this episode on youtube (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> to see the tour after this so so yeah it's like pleasure over pressure and it's mm-hmm. like that's that's the whole point that I always try to teach through outsourcing is like mm-hmm. let go of what drives you crazy bores you feels like pressure yeah. and keep the pleasurable stuff and mm-hmm. yeah I'm so happy you just like we're like fuck these emails I'm oh, done 100 <laughs> percent. to this day I will only go in there if I absolutely need yeah. to or if there's um something that she can't respond to and yeah. I need to otherwise and I experienced uh, that personally you yeah. are walking the talk because yeah. I was only talking to Danica over yeah. emails to even set this up mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I'm like yes Katie you go <laughs> yes because I have this horrible habit and over to if I show you my phone right now <laughs> I have like 400 and something unread text messages. Like it's bad. So Mm. I do this thing without realizing that like uh, somebody will text me and I'll open it and I'll read it and I'll be like, oh yeah, I'm so excited to respond. But I don't have the brain power to do it. And I'm like, I'm going to answer later. And then I never do. And then it goes into the abyss of like five years later. And I'm like, oh my God. And then I'll be like in the middle of something random, like two months later and it'll pop into my head and I'll be like, oh my God, I never answered Sarah back. And then I'll tell myself I'm going to go do it. And then I still don't do it. So it's like, that's a lot. It is a lot. Energy, yeah. energy loops that haven't been closed. Yeah, That's yeah. a lot. So my my do friends, you, wait, do you like? Um, do you know how to mark? Do you mark them unread? I only or- learned 
like can two you days do ago that, that you can on do it iPhone. on the iPhone. But How? Because I have the same issue. Have you updated your iOS yet? I don't know. I think it does it automatically. At night. I haven't and I yeah. don't have the option, but my client was here oh. the other day and she was telling us about that. And she's like, yeah, you can mark it on red. And I'm, I'm going like, to Google oh, that. I didn't know you could do that because that yeah. would change my life. Exactly. Because then yeah. you're just like emails. Exactly. Like, you know, oh, I have the bandwidth now or I don't. Exactly. And yeah. Okay. But then by the time I have the bandwidth, there's like 300 yeah. of them again. And I'm like, okay, no, we don't have the bandwidth. Oh my gosh. I, <laughs> so yeah. it's, it's a thing. So the people in my life, they know, like when I ignore yeah. their texts, I'm not actually ignoring. I'm just probably not there. Not for, there to Like answer just don't have back. the capacity. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. And then I'll pop in like three days later. I'm like, hey. Then I respond yeah. to their message and they're like, okay, sure. <laughs> but <laughs> the ones who get it, get it. You know? Yeah, totally. <laughs> so it, again, bringing and realizing that was one of my weaker areas um, mm-hmm. in my business that I wasn't good at. And having somebody do that for me, delegating that mundane task that I don't like doing has been a game changer. So amazing. Yep so happy for you for that and then let's talk about the associate shooter so tell me about your thought process like where was the idea born and why I had wanted to bring on an associate photographer for a while but I didn't even know where to begin looking for one I was like okay do I go train somebody do I go find somebody that's experienced like where do you even begin with that so it was always kind of a thought in the back of my head um, but I never followed through with it and then so the the photographer that I'm bringing on, I actually worked an event with him, the the drift car events that oh, you saw that I've been going nice. to. Yeah. Oh, she's been going to these <laughs> drifting events with yeah. cars, and yeah. I've been like jealous on the other side. Like I I'm like, I need to go. Every time you text me, you're like, you're living my dream, and I'm like, yeah. Sarah, you should come to these. They're local. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so I worked an event with him. And he was he was taking photos there, and he's part of our our friend group too. Um, and uh, I saw him working, and it reminded me of me. And oh, like, I yeah. was always the type of photographer out there. Like, I would get in the bush if I needed to, and like, I would stop that. Nothing. I still. Them, but a little more <laughs> yeah. controlled in a studio yes. now but when I was out doing weddings you know oh you're... my god I just thought of the worst dirty joke <laughs> do you get into bushes here if you need to <laughs> okay sorry I couldn't let that go clients I promise I will not get in your bush okay <laughs> <laughs> that is not the bush that I'm <laughs> at Selena's back here trying on the fucking she's howling <laughs> <laughs> this is side one. You oh know, <laughs> really, if you haven't kicked your kid out of the room, kick him out yeah, now. Because yeah. like, it's only gonna get worse. Well, at least it wasn't very graphic. <laughs> was I mean, to kids. Um, okay. To, to adults, it was. I will get into certain bushes, but not not all, <laughs> all the bushes. <laughs> okay. Oh my god! <laughs> Where were we? Okay, you're saying. <laughs> He reminded me of me. He got oh, into yeah, bushes. Oh, shit. <laughs> I didn't even know it came out like that. Okay. <laughs> he, he would climb, let's just say, I was going to say up into trees, but that's really not any better. <laughs> <laughs> um, he was just going above and beyond to get the shot. Yeah. And he was like, oh, he, he was going so hard that like he ended up getting poison ivy like all oh, over his legs because he went into in the bush. a bush. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, when I saw him working I'm like he's perfect I was like he is exactly Uh, like me I know watching him work that mm -hmm. I can trust him to go above and beyond for my clients he's very bubbly like I am too so um, it was almost like looking at like the male version of me and I'm like if anybody's gonna come onto the team I want it to be somebody that um, represents me and my business and what I would bring Mm -hmm. to to a session so um, he very much fit the vibe and he was on board with it so yeah it's been fun we have quite a few bookings for him coming up this month this is first month uh, running wild with it so we're very excited to welcome him to the team we we yeah I love how you describe that something Mm -hmm. that I find so fascinating about our brains Mm -hmm. is this sounds so like left field but it's not it's I'm connecting it so when we so firstly our brains are so wired for survival that if there's a new idea that's coming our way of like hey this is something that you can use and change your life it actually seems so foreign Mm -hmm. and it seems more like danger Mm -hmm. so that's why we initially like push it away but then as soon as we see enough proof points and hear enough stories of like oh this worked for this person or that person um or okay i can see how that could work okay i'm gonna try it out slightly here that worked for me. Oh, I'm mm-hmm. going to try it in this bigger way. That worked for me. Mm-hmm. You actually start your brain. There's a part of your brain called the reticular activating system mm-hmm. where it automatically starts noticing things in your life to do with that thing and they mm-hmm. shine brighter. So like, you know, if you go test drive a car yep. and let's say it's like 
your dream car and you're like fuck it i'm gonna test drive a porsche because i feel like it yep, yep. <laughs> and then you see porsches everywhere mm-hmm. it's Love your reticular yeah exactly and it's your reticular activating system being like oh remember that notice it's here it's here because yeah. our subcon we can't consciously there's so much data around us all day every day you yep. can't notice everything consciously so yep. i think it's because you were already experiencing these benefits with outsourcing yeah and you're just like now you see the world a little little bit differently and i think that if you weren't yet in the world of getting support you would have not noticed that quality about him even thought about it that way it would have totally passed you by Absolutely. and so many times other omi students are like sarah the person was in front of me the whole time like my sister calls for me now or this other person my friend like she edits my photos now and yeah. it's like you have all of these opportunities around you and i'm just like so proud that you noticed that and applied it in a new way in a new Mm -hmm. way that's scary and exciting Mm -hmm. but you're doing it absolutely and I've gotten used to the fact of of trying things now I used to be very guarded and I'm like nope 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 now I'm like okay I'm gonna trust you until you prove me that prove to me that I can't and I'm gonna put faith in you and and you know hype you up and be like yep you can do this and if you show me that you can't then you know obviously we we decide what to do from there but Mm -hmm. um taking a risk has gotten much easier for me and like you said um a lot of it boils down to getting over a lot of those fears and getting over the limiting beliefs and having a team now we're just in the process of expanding it in completely new ways which Mm -hmm. I'm a little nervous about but I'm feeling very good about it um and yeah it having gone through what I had gone through already definitely helped because I don't think I would have ever taken the leap like that out of the blue Mm -hmm. unless I knew how to hire somebody and how to bring somebody onto the team yeah and how to have all the experience of the the things that worked and didn't work along the way Mm -hmm. and I remember last year you're like oh Sarah every one of those experiences was worth it absolutely because it gave me all the puzzle it gave you all the puzzle pieces to what works Mm -hmm. and then moving forward you now have the skills to build a team an effective team even faster and faster because you're like that works put that piece in that works put that piece in absolutely yeah big time big time like there's little things that I learned from you too where it's like don't um put the name of the person in a video so you can repurpose that so yes. there's been things that I've repurposed and I'm learning that not to do that yeah <laughs> um yeah like there's there's little tidbits that I, I took from that and then also with my own kind of findings going through the journey and it's all been very beneficial so yeah mm-hmm. that's amazing um another question that comes to mind yeah. is what does your vo- is it vo your grandma vo yeah what does your vo think of you now having a man <laughs> Oh, I knew that was coming and I heard that in the last podcast yeah. that I listened to and I'm like, oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> she's very happy every time. Okay. If you're European, you know, every time you go to your grandma's, uh, they're like, oh, you, you, you find somebody yet? You didn't sleep. Like, you know, Vivo, slow it down, slow it down. Um, so she's very excited. She's very happy. <laughs> and she is, is, was actually the most happy for me getting out of weddings because she's like, oh, you have a life now and now you can go do things. And, and on the weekends, right? On the weekend. Yeah, I can yeah. go to her house now. And so she's been like my number one, um, hype girl. She is just the best human ever. We're seeing her this weekend for Thanksgiving. So Aww. it'll be good. It'll be good. But she's very happy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we all are. I just remember like just the way you described her her energy even just through you permeated that episode and I just remember she was just so sweet she's like oh I'm so happy you're happy now you don't work too hard anymore and I was just like oh Oh, she's so sweet she yeah. would stress out about me driving all the way um out like an hour away for mm. weddings she'd be like oh kitty no 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 please no please no like she wouldn't sleep like she would oh. call my dad and be like oh like how did the wedding go and I'm like oh my gosh now I gotta report back to the parents I gotta report back to the grandma I got like, a whole like group of people that I had to say like yes I'm home I made it home safe thank you so um but they're just they come from a place of love and she's yeah. just she's always been my number one supporter and um an I even anchor. had my grandma yeah yeah. And I, uh, I even had um, a little surprise party for my mom at my old studio when she turned um, a certain age. I know she doesn't want me to <laughs> pro- probably say that on the podcast. But nice, nice age. <laughs> I was going to say it and I'm like, no, no. A certain age. A certain age. Um, well, imagine if someone's like, hey, how old are you? <laughs> yeah. I'm a yeah. certain age. <laughs> well, just, yeah, we just, I'm old. That's all. <laughs> but, um, and I remember like I had boudoir pictures, client stuff up on the wall, obviously. It's boudoir studio. And I'm like, oh my God, what is Bobo going to say about this? Oh. My God, she's going to judge what I'm doing. And then um, it, she, I remember she went into my office. She snuck in. She's a little sneak. Oh. Like, she is so nosy that she'll she'll get right in there and uh she's like oh so beautiful so beautiful and I'm like either she doesn't know what she's looking at right now or she's like like 
gotten with the times a little <laughs> bit. <here. laughs> but she she's always been my big Aww. supporter and she's just the best human ever. So that's so cute. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I feel I'm so excited to have caught up with you. And yeah, I just I just love how like last year, like if you're listening to this episode and you haven't listened to last year's, like just go listen to one episode 122 because it's just so fun to see someone grow. And it's only been a year. I know. It's only been a year. And it's like you have now two studios mm-hmm. and a whole new space, a space you dreamed of. You mm-hmm. even were saying the last one didn't have a washroom. Now you're like, we've expanded. We oh, have yeah. a washroom. And like, <laughs> oh my gosh, stay tuned for the tour because we're about to do that. Um, and I think lastly, what I want to ask is just like your perspective and advice for any photographers. Like if you just tune into them, tune into like that, that past Katie that was so... You know how you, you, you mentioned like the journey uh, you had about like your self-confidence, your self-image and how you get that because you were there mm-hmm. and now you've gotten to this new place and you feel like you've evolved and grown and you're embodying that new version of yourself that you wanted to be. Mm-hmm. Imagine now back being to that Katie that was overworked, burnt out, missed family, friends, weddings, family get togethers. And there's photographers out there right now that are literally in that. Mm-hmm. What, do you, what would you say to them if they're like, I really want to sign up for OMI or start outsourcing, but I'm just scared. Yes. Can I do it? I would say dive deep and figure out what your why is and why you're working yourself so hard. Because when I did that, I realized it was coming from a place of, I wouldn't say trauma, but I was avoiding a lot of things in my life, avoiding a lot of healing. I was working myself to the brim to avoid feeling other things. And if you're doing it for that reason, you're not doing it for the right reason. If you're doing it because you're passionate about it, that's a whole different story. Um, But looking back and looking at myself, I probably would tell her, get help earlier, like with assistance and emails and, and streamline your business better because the amount of time you lose out on being burnt out, being stressed out and trying to get over that burnout, which is the era that I'm in right now. I'm finally coming out of it and it feels amazing. But going through that whole process, as much as it was worth it financially and business wise, yes, it got me to this point. Um, I missed out on a lot and I, I would hate for anybody else to go through that. It's not worth it. And like we said in the beginning of the podcast, 95% done. It's better than 100% perfect. And when you get over those limiting beliefs, your life is going to change in so many ways. And it's brought in a lot of great people into my life. It's brought in a lot of good things to me. And I'm very happy with where I'm at. I call this my peaceful era right now. Um, I'm just I'm just in a really good place and not burnt out like I was before. So um, stop prioritizing the hustle or glamifying the hustle. You know, it's important to hustle. It's important to put effort into your business of course but don't burn yourself out at every end because everything in your life is going to suffer and there's so much more to life than just working hard so Mm -hmm. thank you so much oh my gosh and now oh wait okay we're gonna do the tour but first where can everybody connect with you and find you and see your work oh my god okay get a pen because i got a lot of instagrams (laughs) do it (laughs) (laughs) Um, my main one that i use right now is boudoir by katie marie Uh, You can find me on Instagram and TikTok under that name. Um, My wedding page, if you want to check out my lifestyle, a couple of stuff. If you would like to book in with my associate photographer, he's awesome. Um, You can find that at Katie Marie Photography with an underscore. The Katie Marie Photography was taken. So I had to use an underscore. Underscore at the end, At the very end. Yep. So Katie Marie Photography underscore. Mm -hmm. Um, My website is katiemariephotography.ca. And... I think that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I have a long ass list now. <laughs> now too, I'm like, I have here's a, a podcast. Too, here's my Instagram. Here are all the resources yeah. I have for you. It's like, yeah, I have fun. my little like I'm doing a little passion project, taking um, videos of of drift cars. So if you want to find me there, that is called the Media Barbie. And will you invite me to the next one or of whatever course. one? Our schedules Sarah, align. Like you have no idea. It's I my will dream. get you in the car oh for a ride God. along. Yes, yes. I promise you, I will get you in my car for a ride. I'm along. so excited. So, <laughs> I got you. I got you. Next time you'll be seeing Sarah in yeah. the car. We'll podcast live from oh the track. Oh my god, yes. <laughs> Let's do that. I got you. We'll we'll, yeah. we'll take you on a on a on a drift event. So awesome. Thank you so much, Katie. Thank and you. now we'll do the tour. Yay! <laughs> All right, so this is like a little bit of like an MTV Cribs vibe where Katie's gonna show me her studio, but you guys come along for the ride and get to see it, especially if you're someone that is like dreaming of a studio. This is gonna be so much fun for you to see and dream and be like If she can have it, I can have it. So let's go see. Now I get to do the little. (laughs) Hello. Hello. 
Welcome to the studio. Yeah, come on in. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Welcome to the studio. Hello. I'm so happy to have you here. Uh, uh, this is our main room here. So I like to call this my little Moroccan vibe room. Uh, when you walk in, it's very zen in here. My yeah. sister laughs at me because she knows I hate color. I don't have no color in this room. It's either brown or beige. That's, that's the theme in here. Um, so, so yeah, I have a bunch of random stuff, photo sets we shoot here sometimes. Those are actually right from Morocco too. Are they? Yeah, they okay, because literally I got here and I'm like, this is like Tulu Morocco vibes. Oh yeah. Obsessed. I, I ship them in straight from Morocco. That's so amazing. um yeah, they're pretty cool. They're one of my favorite things. And I actually hand made that wall. You did? Oh wait, no, I saw in your story. I did, yeah, I so did. Good. So uh yeah, this little corner. Yes. Did you <laughs> like did you enjoy that? Like probably like was Define it the enjoy. Was it like the vision of like I, I want to be creative and I want to be on the answer, so I'll enjoy it. And then you're halfway through, you're like, I can't wait for this to be done. Absolutely. <laughs> this room, as beautiful as she is, um, was a labor of love. We had a big yeah. team helping out here because, believe it or not, uh, the paint on the walls, you can't see it, but yeah. on that wall over there, it was an oil based paint. Mm -hmm. And it took like 10 coats of primer to cover over the top. But yeah. 10 coats yeah. of primer? I have never primed. So much in my life so I had to bring in all hands on deck. I think yeah. we had eight people here the one day working on it it was a lot yeah um, so it was one of those projects that I love her now she's beautiful yeah. but she was a pain in the ass yeah. <laughs> so it, yeah. it was a labor of love but yeah. I like doing this stuff yeah. the artsy side of me comes out so yeah, yeah I, I built a little wall but I'll, I'll tell my clients too yeah. like, listen um, don't oh, actually lean on it because oh, you know, it's got not it. the most dirty. Right, but, um, that's so true. Oh my god, yeah, I totally it totally pulled me. I thought it was like a wall, right? <laughs> that's so smart. Darby secrets. Yeah. <laughs> but I love the real, like the real, it's like what it takes to actually like put together a studio. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So then you come on in here. This yeah. is technically my uh, reception area where we just filmed our podcast. Yeah. We don't usually have the two chairs set up like this. Yeah, that's just for this. For purposes yeah. today, we had them set up. But <laughs> usually it's pretty open. Um, we have my little reception desk over here. Here. This is epic. Is when, I, when I saw it, when I, I was going to post this, I was like, that is so legit. Like, oh shout out to Tara. She's <laughs> awesome. She made my logo for me. Um, but yeah, I, I love that. And it was yeah. a really surreal moment to me too, having that um, moment of seeing your name actually yeah. on something. And I'm like, wow. Like, it just makes it feel real. Yeah, like so. some kind of like next level of like yeah. a new peak of the mountain that you got to. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So awesome. I love this area. We will occasionally shoot in here. We get really good sun coming through the windows. So. Um, we, we love this room and it is just a really nice room to welcome people to the studio and kind of, yeah. you know, set the mood. And then we go into a completely different world next. So <laughs> show me this world. We go from zen, yeah. uh, Moroccan vibes, very neutral, to, yeah. <laughs> to the set swing. <laughs> so, have a seat, have fun, get comfortable. <laughs> Not even a sex life. <laughs> Live your best life. Live your best life, Sarah. Oh, um, this is definitely it. more of the the fun room. Um, yeah. So if we haven't made it very clear, I am a boudoir photographer. <laughs> probably clarify that. Um, this is not my personal. <laughs> oh, people know this. Is your <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> Um, so one of the add-ons that I have for my clients is yeah. that we can um, do a swing add-on and it's super fun. It's the Honey Burdette swing. She is beautiful. She yeah. has gold plated everything. So um, it's a really fun time and yeah. not a lot of clients are comfortable taking a risk right away, which is yeah. okay. But by the second time they come back, they're like, put me in the swing, put me in the harness. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Let's have fun with it. So it is one of our add-ons. I love shooting with it. I think it's super fun. And you literally, you would show them like ideas and poses in it. Oh yeah. Oh girl. Oh, that's. Oh girl. <laughs> I am right in there. <laughs> that's amazing. Cause yeah, it's like, <laughs> cause that's like. But I love how you because you shoot here so often. You have that baseline foundation yeah. of like I know what works, and then let's customize it to each. Human and Absolutely. Like, I love that. Absolutely. So, yeah. yep, yeah, we show you all the posing. You don't need to be scared of any of that. Um, yeah. so I know a lot of people are going to look at that and be like, you're yeah. <laughs> Look what, what I did. Look what I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But we, we've had clients go upside yeah. down on this thing. Um, so it's all uh, based on your comfort level, too, right? If you're yeah. not comfortable doing anything like that, we can keep it pretty simple. We can shoot the bottom of the floor and kind of holding on to it. So, yeah. there's a lot you can do with the swing. Um, but she's a great add on. We love her. And yeah, she's a part of the family now. So that's really cool. <laughs> and then behind me, you're going to 
little weirder, but <laughs> this is the bondage set over here. Um, oh my gosh, so it's again, so pretty, like the way it's laid out. Right, wow. goes hand in hand with everything else. And yeah. um, if you want to do this as an add-on, you know, we have again the honey burdette, the, the spreader bar. We got the can cups over here. I mean, if we want a little whip moment, like. <laughs> That's so yeah. <laughs> a whip moment. A little whip moment, you know. Um, so there, there's a lot of fun stuff that we can play around with here. Is this a, like nipple? They colors? are, yeah. yes, they are, they are. If you want to get that spicy, we have tons more in the closet, yeah. which we're going to go to next. I'm very excited. To oh my gosh, I can't wait. Um, but yeah, I literally, I had to use a washroom here and I didn't want to see anything. So I like went to the washroom with this on the floor because I wanted to see everything for the first time just like you are. So yeah. <laughs> you're seeing it first hand. Right yeah, now, yeah. but um, yeah, I mean, we have a little bit of something or a little bit of everything for something yeah, yeah, yeah. here. So, if you want to spice up your session, um, that is another add on. Um, so, you could go with the bondage site, you can go with the swing, tons of stuff to choose from. It really is catered to the client and their comfort level, obviously. Yeah, so if you want to keep it more modest and yeah. more um, just lingerie, bed yeah. vibes, we can do that. And then you have some clients that come in and they're like, I'm ready. Give me the crazy. Yeah, so we, we can take it from any I level of crazy that. that you guys want me to. I really <laughs> keep in mind all the different like flavors and personalities of people. Definitely, yeah. definitely. That's awesome. Um, I hand painted this too. This is wow. one another favorite of love. So um, not as laborious. Not as laborious. Okay, still, uh, still a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it took a while, but I love it. It turned out really cool. Yeah. This is just temporary right now. Um, we're actually about to begin building Christmas sets in here. So okay, cool. um, this whole area will be less of a sway, okay. more of a Christmas vibe because okay. um, we do have some mini sessions happening. So nice. she's a little plain right now because we're working things around and moving things around. So yeah, that's nice. pretty much this room here, but awesome. it is fun. I keep it darker and moodier because yeah. why not, right? Yeah, so. variety. It's amazing. Exactly. So much, even this like, couch <laughs> with the lighting, the way it's exactly. pouring in, and like she gets amazing. moved all over the place too. So she uh, she comes from room to room to room. Yeah. Um, depending on where. <laughs> Love you call your items. She. she oh, every literally she, everything, <laughs> everything. Whether it's like my water bottle, I'll be like, where is she? Where is she? It's, it's a weird thing. I, mean, I, I wish I had an explanation for it, but okay. I really don't. You do you? You do you? Just another another weird quirk of okay, but you'll learn that. You'll yeah. learn that. Where's your hairbrush? Oh my gosh, my brush, I chucked her over there somewhere, but I was telling Sarah, yeah. you can usually find me with a brush in my hand, I like to brush my hair. Just like, and I'm opposite, like I, I went to Barbados for a month, yeah. and I didn't brush my hair for a whole month, oh because the salt water was just like perfectly keeping my curls intact, I'm like, nope, no hairbrush for me. But you have nice curls, I have like straight, this is my natural, yeah. so if I don't brush uh, it, it goes, yeah, it, it does not look good. Yeah. <laughs> this oh is probably my favorite room of the studio because I have put a lot of effort into building this collection. Um, wow. So we have sizes that range from extra small all the way to 5XL. So there is something for every single client in here. The reason I started doing a client closet was because I wanted to take that pressure off of the client to yeah. buy their own lingerie. And you know, this shit's expensive. So like, <laughs> you're already spending a lot to come here. It's an investment. Um, so I didn't want you guys to feel the, the need to go out and buy your own stuff. So I'm like, let me take care of it for you. I have some options. You don't have to wear it. If you want to bring your own outfits, by all means, you're more than welcome to. Um, but yeah, clients usually they'll dive in here. We'll pull some things for them. Yeah. I actually um, send out a question there to all of my clients and um we get their their sizing before they arrive we get their vibes what they're looking for if there's specific pieces that they want us to pull and we'll actually go in the night before and we'll oh, pull things for so them good. so that's so here. special it's like yeah. a exclude like a tailored experience exactly. and like even if you think of like like i went to holt run through once yes. as like yeah. a just part of an excursion experience that yeah. i'd like oh bonus yeah. and they literally were just like handpicking you items to try on the change room based on you and like whoa this is fancy yeah, yeah. and i love that it's like it's pre ready yes. and i i totally agree about the whole like pressure because i'm someone yes. that's not like i'm not very much into like clothes and style and it's hard for me to like put shit together so yeah. the pressure of like Oh my god, I gotta go find the perfect outfit. It's like the fact that you have this. Yeah. Like this is my this would be my section. Like, <laughs> I mean, you gotta take the right Yeah, I'm like shiny. 
<laughs> yeah, cold. Exactly. I'm like, that's so pretty. And wow. it's very overwhelming too. Like when clients yeah. walk in, they're like, I don't know what to yeah. touch. What do I oh look my at? Gosh. Um, so we we kind of take you on a little tour if you want. We, yeah. uh, my assistant is is great at taking you guys in and you know really helping pick some pieces for you. Stunning. So wow. Um, there's tons. And you get to go shopping like pretty much <laughs> right pretty off much. on your business. Like pretty much. Oh my gosh. Gone. Can I say? <laughs> Can I say a little shout out to my accountant? Love him to death. Um, when I brought in my write-offs, when I opened my studio, he's going through all my stuff and he's like, you spent how much on, on lingerie? And I'm like, don't ask questions, okay? Don't ask questions. I said, it's work-related. That's all you need to know. <laughs> so he looked at me a little weird that day. He's like, all right, I'm going to roll with it. And I'm yeah. like, just don't ask questions. Yeah. <laughs> spend a lot of money here, but um, no, it, honestly, the client. I will say, yeah, ninety-five percent of my clients wear stuff from the client closet mm. solely, like the whole shoe yeah. house, all they wear. Um, I do have some clients that bring in their own stuff, of course, but yeah. it has gotten a lot of use. It's been awesome, and they love that aspect of not having to stress out about what to wear because a lot of people have never even worn lingerie before, yeah. and they don't even know what to do. And they're like, I wouldn't know where to start, <laughs> and we we kind of know now doing this so much what looks flattering with certain mm -hmm. clients and what skin tones look better with certain colors yeah, and, and there's true. certain things that you just know will photograph better so we'll kind of show you that when you get here and um, you have some time to try it on too so we're not rushing that process you can take as much time as you need to try stuff on and make sure you feel comfortable in it and confident mm -hmm. and then you're ready to roll with the shoot from there but this is definitely our, our fun room for That's sure. That's amazing. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. And we do have um, other add-ons too here for yeah. clients. So we have like the big luxury robes. These are beautiful even for maternity. So I do yeah. maternity boudoirs. We have our giant angel wings over here too. Yeah. Which, that's epic. <laughs> they are a statement. Oh yeah, yeah they they are. Uh, I've had some clients come in and be like, "Girl, I'm living my Victoria's Secret dream oh, right that's now." So like true. walking down the aisle. Oh, so, um, yeah, we we have certain clients that have come specifically for the wings, which oh. I thought was really cool. So, um, there's that's tons amazing. of everything in here for you to choose from. So, we got you covered. And then this down to the section. <laughs> Thank amazing. you. And then I gotta show you my little boudoir bear. Oh my god, it's so freaking cute. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I found it thrifting, or somebody found it thrifting, and they gave it to me. And it's literally like she's called the boudoir bear. So people are always like, "Why do you have a stuffed animal in here?" And I'm like, "Cause she's the boudoir bear." Oh my god, the little yeah. eyelashes, like someone like it's liter it's vintage, like it's boudoir bear, like <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> boudoir yeah, bear, like it's actually boudoir okay. bear. <laughs> oh, you named it that. But no, it's actually a boudoir <laughs> bear, and I thought it was just the cutest like, thing. Why not? Yeah, oh. so she is um, like our closet mask. <laughs> Now, so she she lives That's here. So cute. Oh <laughs> we love her, but uh, that is that is our closet. Okay, so, uh, like, move it on. Yeah, we go down this little hallway here. Now, this is actually a very important thing. Um, uh, I actually took the tour from my old studio, and I brought it with me because oh. we started a tradition at the old studio um, where I got clients to sign the door. And if you look at the back, the back is like totally filled up too. Like it's completely, <laughs> oh my gosh, it's completely yeah. filled up. So oh my gosh, so both sides. It's both sides. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I don't want to leave the door there because there's so many sweet messages here. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of like our little tradition at the end of the day, I get my clients to come in and they leave a little love note or they, you know, leave a little message about their day and how they felt. And it's a really, really, really cool thing. So, um, we're running out of room though. This has so much energy <laughs> coming off of it. Like I'm just like, I even felt you getting emotional about it. Just I like, do. And I'm feeling emotional. I do. Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I walk by sometimes and I'll just stay on the floor and I just read Aww. everything, especially when I'm having a hard day and I'm yeah. like, you know, imposter syndrome kicks in as a photographer yeah. and you're just not feeling yourself and I'll come read this and it'll cheer me up instantly because it's just looking in the grand scheme of how many people we've changed. Yeah. It's, it's incredible. Oh, you're going to so. need more doors. <laughs> you're going to need like a roll <laughs> down something with like layers or... I know. Uh, I don't, I don't know what I'm gonna get them to sign next. Maybe we'll steal the door behind you. Look at this. <laughs> I love myself as I am in this moment. Without condition, without reason, I am enough. Wow. A hundred per a thousand or wait, how many zeros? A hundred thousand percent. The sexiest and coolest experiment ever. Thank you, Katie. <laughs> Experience. Experience. <laughs> Experience. <laughs> it's so good. It's all good. Just look so peeking in. <laughs> There's oh so many gosh. beautiful things on here too. Amazing. Thank you for bringing back my badass boss bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's really cool and yeah. then, um it's cool because clients get their hair and makeup done right beside it so they can kind of read it while they're oh that's smart because then they can also yeah. even it e can ease their anxiety to see Big how time. 
the like feet how people felt after the experience Big time. Really, really smart. every single one of these people came in mm -hmm. very nervous very scared not knowing what to expect yeah. by the end of it you're leaving and you're just like i'm feeling this. oh my gosh i'm feeling confident so yeah. this is like our, our confidence store which That's I, amazing. I really love that it's a cool cool thing yeah then oh you come gosh. in here this is we Wait, have, what the heck? Yeah, that is so cute. We have a little shout out for you. Is this you. what you do for every client? Every client, we customize it for them. When that is genius, because how do I feel right now? I feel so special. Right? That shows that you're important. Aww. You mean a lot to us. And we always prep it for you guys beforehand. Yeah. So um, it's our little, our little welcome area. And we have snacks for you guys. And if you want to help yourself to anything here, oh um, I even have, these are fun, so. We give uh, clients a little beverage in the morning, and I oh have. Oh um, my god! I actually have these. Which <laughs> is, it's amazing. They're little uh, body champagne those? glasses. Yeah, do not really? Oh. Amazon is life. I'm telling you. Oh my god! It just the Amazon like, driver knows me by name. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the Amazon driver knows your name. I love those. Oh They're just god. adorable. This is so so. Cool. Yeah, it's like our little coffee bar. Yeah. So um, we offer you know, drinks and Do you do the styling? You have such a knack for that. Like, <laughs> and it's funny you say that because I look at it and I'm like, there's so much I need to do still, which is not done yet, but <laughs> it's, it's pink themed. So yeah. um, oh I started picking up pink themed Christmas things to keep the yeah. I did. As again, That's again, beautiful. Like that pink is so good. I know. And How I, many pinks did you have to decide? Oh my gosh. Are? You know what? I actually picked that pretty it's like quick. It's a peach pink. It is. Too. It's yeah. like a peachy pink. We have a lighter one on the wall. Yeah. Um, I need to change up these knobs though. Or, Working. <laughs> <laughs> this room we don't shoot in. It's just like the getting ready yeah, kind of yeah, hangout yeah. room. This so is the makeup spot. It is. Okay. So when you come in in the morning, this yeah. is kind of the main room that you're gonna hang out in here. Yeah. Um. So you'll hop up in the chair. You'll sit here, and then we have our makeup artist um dolling you up and glamming you up here. So um usually you'll be hanging out here for the most part. Sometimes, depending on what the client feels, we will turn them from mirrors so they can get their grand reveal at the end. Oh, a lot of people nice. have never even worn makeup before, I, so when you go through that transition, it's like, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> this is a cool it experience. Is. And so. I love that you know that and you don't assume. Yeah. Oh, we always but, ask. Yeah. We always ask. Because if we have clients that have not worn a lot of makeup, mm -hmm. the makeup artist will know to go a little lighter yeah. and not overwhelm yeah. them and try to keep more of a natural vibe. Mm -hmm. And you have some clients that are like me and we're used to wearing makeup and we're like, yeah. Doll me up. Oh, I'm, yeah. glam. I'm going glam. <laughs> Put it all on. So um, it depends on the client, right? But we, like I said earlier, we get a questionnaire that mm -hmm. goes through every single thing down to like how much hair you have. So mm -hmm. we know if we need extra time to curl your hair. Ooh, um, and if you have any allergies or if you have any injuries, if yeah. there's anything in specific that you don't want us to emphasize, like we go through probably like a three page questionnaire of everything that we need to know beforehand. So when you get into the Very makeup artist's key. chair, she already knows quite a bit about you. So yeah. we customize the experience to you as well. Yeah. So that is this portion. Um, then we have our, your like really pretty sign up there, which we love her Stunning. too. She's a mood. <laughs> like, yeah, it is. And you know, like really just does like, like it's it add, it be, the way that the yeah. light falls in the room is so different than any other light, exactly. and that just adds that like warmth vibe, like a sexy vibe yeah. too, but like warm at the same time. Exactly, yeah. and I have a new floor coming in too. Oh, it is not installed yet, yeah. but um, it's gonna be like a little white marble mood in here. Oh, so nice. I tried to make it like Miami vibes in here. Oh, cool. <laughs> you know, that's yeah. what I was going for. Yeah. So, um, again, work in progress. Yeah. We only moved in a couple months ago, so. She's still really impressive. Quite a couple <laughs> months ago, and while shooting, yes, Very working awesome. nonstop, I'm trying to squeeze it in. I kind of yeah. got it up and running, and I'm like, okay, we'll tackle the projects, and the projects have just been laying. Yeah, 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 but, yeah. It's a work in progress. So. Yeah, that's the fun part about having a studio. You get to exactly. change it whenever you want to. The creativity around it. Exactly. Yeah. Then you come in here. Now this part is. Um, a little, a little, not claustrophobic, but we kind of put two things in one here. So I yeah. wanted the change room to have its own area. Ooh, with the washroom. Exactly. And one yeah. thing, like I mentioned, my old studio, we didn't have a washroom in the unit. So when mm -hmm. clients were going through and they were doing outfit swaps, um, they had to literally walk down the hall to yeah. go do that. And that was just a pain. It's a, sep it's a separate experience. It like cuts the experience. Exactly. Bit, really, yeah. So we liked the idea of uh, having the bathroom so close proximity to the change area. So yeah. then that way when you are in here, if you need a bathroom break or you need to do anything before you come back out this is like get yourself prepped up do your thing we'll leave you alone in here however much time really you cool. need. so yeah. um this is where we will also lay out their outfits awesome. so when the morning like i mentioned 
<laughs> we will pick out some outfits for the clients. So usually we'll have them laid out oh, here nice. um, yeah. and we can kind of show them if they want to try them on, they can. If not, no pressure. Um, we give them a robe in the morning and some slippers down there too. So you can really feel at home when you get here Smart. and you can just hang out with a little drink in hand and live your best life. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, this is the change area. So you obviously know what happens in a change area. <laughs> I don't think I need to explain that, but yeah. um, this part I'm very excited about because I found a bathroom in my unit. <laughs> it's really cool retro. It is, wow. it is. I didn't really, it was just like this, so. Oh, that's um, awesome. Yeah, yeah, so it was really cool, and yeah. we actually shoot in here. Oh, nice. So yeah, now that I have a bathtub, um, yeah. we do the wet set, and we do the shower set, so oh. that kind of happens in an actual shower, I would yeah. say. So, um, this do you is play with fun. both natural and... Um, artificial light in here? Not so much artificial because okay. today the sun's going down a little bit, but midday when we're shooting, yeah, it's light. light. That comes through here. Oh, and it's diffused! Yes, oh exactly. So it's private, nobody can see anything, yeah. but um, the light is beautiful in here earlier in the day. So we this don't is literally know. made for you, like, it's perfection. perfection. It's perfect. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it is perfect. So, yeah. I got the little vibes in here. Yeah. Um, I, I don't have a shower curtain on because again we shoot in there and yeah, I really yeah. need it. So yeah, like <laughs> someone's gonna come in and be like, I'm gonna shower first. I mean, realistically, <laughs> if you needed to stay the night here, it's doable. You could, yeah, yeah. it is a kitchen, yeah. there's everything. So um, it's very cozy and, and a bedroom where we're going next, right? Exactly. <laughs> so moving our way to the big room I where from the corner of my eye. This is where I do most of my shooting because of course boudoir, you want the scene yeah. to be a bed. Um, so if you come over here, this is a very big open room over here. Nice. So there's not a lot in here right now. Like I said, I'm still working on this room, but yeah. we have a bed and that's all that really matters for shooting. We move things around constantly though. So that vanity will come over here when I'm shooting with it. We bring the furniture that we were sitting on for the podcast out there. We bring nice. that in here. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, it's just kind of like an open room. When I shoot and my style, I like to focus on the client. Yeah. And they are my main focus, and I'm a very dark editor. So believe it or not, um, the actual space itself really has nothing to do with how the pictures turn out because mm -hmm. I can shoot in a small corner and it doesn't really even matter at yeah. that point. It's um, very open, so I like to keep this room very, very minimal so mm -hmm. I can focus on my clients. So we can get them laying on the floor, we can get them in the window, and there's not a bunch of stuff all around. Yeah, so all the stuff is in the front. Very spacious, very yeah. spacious. And it's really cool how it's like a coat here. Yeah, so actually, because like that could help with posing, right? Funny story. That's so, <laughs> this has been a photography studio for I want to say 20 years, 30 years, a very long time. Um, yeah, and it, it's always kind of progressed. There was a guy in here who he had all the windows boarded up, I think, yeah. and that is why the floor is curved, because he uh, made that one giant set. Right. So it was just yeah. painted white, and yeah. um, it was just, yeah, he, he shot there and did a lot of, like, uh, studio work, yeah, yeah. lighting and all that. So yeah. um, it's always been a photography studio, so that's why the floor is curved, and I'm in the process of figuring out if I can actually get rid of the floor, because if I could keep that curve and have it really open, that would be really fun. So. Like, keep the color going? Yeah, kind and of just thing? have concrete, yeah. open mm -hmm. concrete. Oh, nice. Really cool yeah. vibe, so. We'll see, but for now it does the job and it's all we really need. So this awesome. is the room that always moves around and we always kind of change it up. I love that sign. Thank Naked. you. <laughs> so good. Fun times over here. <laughs> There's a lot of getting naked that happens yeah. in the studio. Yeah. <laughs> and at this point, it's so normal for us too. Like my clients will look at me and they'll be like, is this weird for you? And I'm like, no, no. no it was like another day in the office. Just desensitized. Me. Completely. Like, yeah. My mind is somewhere else. I'm like, what do I want to make for dinner? Like, how many edits do I have to do? Like, what am I doing later? I got to be at this place. Like, we're not even thinking yeah. about the fact that you guys are standing there and lingerie. With the bush. Sometimes, right? <laughs> if you didn't watch the podcast. No. Yeah. The, the bush <laughs> reference is for the podcast. <laughs> go listen to the podcast because I am not even going to explain that one. You just got to go. Oh, yeah. uh, yes, yes. So, <laughs> like I said, <laughs> we've seen it all at this point. Exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah, no, and it's, it's, it's super cool. I mean, clients will get very comfortable when they're in here too, and they get very nervous in the first little like five, ten minutes, and then yeah. from there you see them. It's a really cool moment. I, I like to call it like the light switch moment where I see them just kind of like let their guard down. They're like, you know what? I'm just going to roll with it, and it's like a whole different person comes out. So yeah. once you get over, like we talked about earlier, getting over those initial fears, yeah, that you turn into a whole different person. And you have music going? Oh, okay. oh yeah. It's like yes. it to, I don't know how like, yeah. it has to has to move. Big time. We have to hype them up. We yeah. have to have we have all the Beyonce's playing. Yeah. 
if I'm being honest, I've been listening to the Beyonce for like three, <laughs> four years now. So like, I do it for you guys. I don't want it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I don't know if you know that side of me, but like I like listen to like metal music. Okay, I like yeah. scream, I play drums. Like I'm very yeah. like that's my genre. But yeah. I know most people are probably not gonna want to listen to that. So I trip yeah. it out for you guys. Yeah. Um, so you'll love the music. Yeah. I'm over here like, girl, I hear the song. But if you see <laughs> someone else, like, they're you loving know, it so much better. It's like they you die. end up loving it in the moment oh for the vision. But it's like. Hundred percent. You see them vibe, and yeah. we'll like have little dance breaks, or we'll yeah. sing, and it's a, it's a fun time. Yeah. And um, some clients have specific requests, so that's actually one thing that I will put in their questionnaire. Um, I ask them because I am a music person, and I yeah. know how important it is. Yeah. Um, I say, do you have a specific genre that you like listening mm -hmm. to, or do you have a playlist? Or do you have a sexy playlist? That exactly. You use at home. Yeah. And I tell them like, if you have time, make a playlist. We can connect you to the Bluetooth, and you can play your own music. Yeah. About half of my clients will do that, yeah. and they have their own. Playlist and they're like, this is what makes me feel good. This is yeah. what gets me in the mood and yeah. energy. And I'm like, yeah, it's like, bring up that energy, whatever you need. I will troop it out. I will listen to it. Yeah. I will do the whole shoot with country music on. If I have to. <laughs> <laughs> not, it's not gonna love it. it. <laughs> it's what they need. Yeah. But it's what the client needs. Exactly. Like, that's the thing we tell them when they come here for the day. This yeah. is their home for the day, right? Yeah. So we cater everything to you um, based on what you want and what your needs are. So if Amazing. you want to blast the country music. We'll do it for You're you. You're selling me. I think I'm going to sign myself up here. You should. Play a little Alt-J. Okay, girl. Yes, yes. I'm down for that. Okay. Okay. Because you like, um, you like what other kind of music do you like? You do the, uh, what's it called? Like well, you do yeah. the shuffling, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. electronic yeah. music, EDM. Yeah. 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 But yeah. I have a sexy playlist. Okay. Actually, I'm now evolved. I have a sexy playlist too. Oh. So I wore the other ones, so now I'm like. You know, okay, well then you bring out all the sexy things. Yeah. So they can have your vibe, whatever you want, we'll make it happen. So. Yeah, nice surprise for Rory. Oh yeah, Ooh, Rory to tune out right now. Just <laughs> he doesn't listen to my podcast, so it's like, that's why I can say it. <laughs> surprise for Rory. And you know what, yeah. it's funny you say that, I do want to touch on that a little bit too. So we get a lot of clients come in um, that want to do sessions for a partner, or they want to mm -hmm. surprise their partner. And while we love that and we think it's a great idea, I always try to push them and say, hey, do this for yourself. Um, oh. When you're doing it for yourself, yes. it's going to change the whole experience and you're not going to have that pressure of like, what does he want? What would he like? Should I do this? Do it for yourself. Share it with your partner, sure. Mm -hmm. But it's an experience that's going to change the way that you see yourself at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And they're going to benefit from that confidence. So I love do that. it for your damn self. <laughs> yeah. And then we can show Pleasure right. for yourself exactly. over pressure and then it ripples everybody in the Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then our final room. Oh my god, I'm so yeah. excited to see this. This, is, this like... is where the magic happens, pretty yeah. much. Or at least you get to see the magic. So yeah. um, one of the big, big, big things about me and the way that I operate is I do same day edits for my clients. So when you are done your photo shoot, I come over here to my little desk area and I edit away and I get them done in about an hour for you. So by the time you go eat lunch, come back, or you can hang here if you want to. We have some snacks or you saw a lot of we're right beside McDonald's. We we get McDonald's way <laughs> way too much. But, <laughs> you know, if you want to have a McDonald's moment to come back, you can. But um yeah, so <laughs> it's funny. So um you guys come back in and I actually have all the pictures ready to go on TV for you. So you get to see them right up um, on, on a slideshow. You can yeah. see all the photos. That big screen too. Big screen. Big, big screen. It. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah, we make you all comfy. You just sit in our big green chair, which if anybody who's been following me for a while, you know my journeys with the chairs. I change the chair like every like three months, four months. I get so sick of them. And oh, <laughs> right. Yeah. I feel like they need a new energy. Yes. Yeah. I've had like 10 chairs. Oh, yeah. so it's actually turned into a little joke for yeah. my past lives. Or like, and by the time they come back to pick up their album, you're, they're like, Where's, Where's the other chair? chair? <laughs> I'm like, it's gone. I sold it. I got a new one. So I, I changed yeah. that. No, I'm already sick of this one too. So yeah. Like, it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> so you never know what chair you're gonna get, yeah. but you will sit on the chair. Yeah. Um, yeah. You can just see your pictures, and then awesome. we kind of go into the ordering uh, portion from there. So mm -hmm. as you can see, I have a ton of albums, um, different sizes, different products that I offer. Um, one good thing, like you mentioned, doing it for Rory, if you want to keep the big album for yourself, we have little brag books. That that's really fun. Right? So it's like, because it's like, that's such a fun size. Exactly. But like, to just to have in the top drawer by the bed, you know? Exactly. And if he's traveling, it's a little pocket <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> He can take you on the go. <laughs> so there's so many different 
options here that we have for clients um, and we customize the album based off of your selections and behind you you'll see this portion over here yeah we always oh, put the kleenex nearby so because yeah. most people like you guys will see if you go on our account the reveal videos are yeah. so special yeah so oh, yeah. We, we keep the kleenex close proximity at all times <laughs> um, but we have tons and tons of cover options that you guys can choose from so when you are going through the album ordering process um they're all in there and you That's can kind so of dive fun. in so yeah. we'll help you pick Velvet. right yeah. i love when people do the crazy covers yeah it happens every time when people will be like oh i want this and then they go for black yeah <laughs> almost got it <laughs> <laughs> so when somebody does do a really crazy cover you get all excited yeah it's like me opening christmas morning I'm like oh let me see it yeah really cool. i know so, I mean, yeah. yeah but um our albums are, are a whole big part of the process too right yeah. so they're customized they come from um a women's only production team too which is really special okay. and they're handmade so um yeah this uh it's a big portion of the day um we go through all of that with you and then you get something to kind of hold on to and keep so yeah. that's a very special part about it too that's amazing which we love wow. so well done that's katie that. thank you i'm wow. so impressed with you thank wow. you wow. <laughs> like, seriously oh, thank you this is like you just painted these uh, you made me want to have this experience and I'm not gonna lie, I already wanted it before, but I'm like, this is like Aww. so special and like Thank how much heart you put into it. Thank it's you. Amazing. I appreciate yeah. that. Honestly, it's something that's such an emotional thing for yeah. clients to do, and I'm a very emotional person, so <laughs> I want them to to really feel every part of the day, and by the end of the day when they leave, they feel like a whole new person mm -hmm. because a lot of my clients are coming in from abusive relationships or they're coming in after going through a health journey or um, they just had a kid and you know, mm -hmm. they're learning to accept that mom bod now yeah. and they're like, I don't even recognize myself and being able to give that person that extra little gift of confidence mm -hmm. is, is a beautiful thing and it's a very emotional thing. So yeah. I'm, well, I'm, I'm very so glad happy. that you feel that. So happy that you found that alignment. Big time. The key to like the, the sustainable fulfillment in our careers. Big so. Time. Yeah. When you do what you love, you won't work a day in your life. Yeah. So. Yeah. And so here's this, your little your desk area. This is my desk area. Yeah. This is for all the photographers to see. It's like show us your desk area. It's really there's not much to <laughs> that. This is the area that I have yet to uh, <laughs> design. I don't yeah. even have a good chair at the moment because <clears throat> funny story. I yeah. fell off my chair. You um, fell off. Yes, I chair. did. I did like two months ago, and I it broke. <laughs> No, you by yourself? It no, was I was literally with a client. It was horrible. We were <laughs> in the middle. Of, <laughs> we were in the middle of it, and um, we were just selecting her photos. And I leaned over to grab something, my microphone, and um, the whole chair because I was missing one arm on the chair. Yeah. Because me being indecisive, we oh. touched on that earlier. Yeah. Um, I I was taking time to replace my chair because I couldn't find one that I loved, but I was missing the handle, so yeah. the weight distribution was like not there. <laughs> and so I, completely, I fell over. I broke my tailbone. It was the whole thing. Oh. So. I gotta get a proper oh. chair, so it, it is what it is, but it's, it's a work in progress. Yeah. You know, it's one of those things. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is, this is awesome. my little, my cute little corner over here. So. Yeah. And then I have so to perfect. hang things because uh, we actually just won Best Photographer in Hamilton again. again. For the fourth year in a row, which oh, is amazing. Crazy. And yeah. the studio, so eventually, all the girl awards and accolades. It's only <laughs> taken me four years to print any of them off, oh. but I thought, okay, I should probably yeah. finally do that. Yeah. So they will be there nice. eventually. That's what that wall is for. But that's amazing. That's pretty well, thank you so much for showing us the space thank you. and. Yeah. yeah. Thank you guys for tuning in. You'll have to come back. Well, we'll be waiting for you for your boudoir shoot. The swing is ready for you. Yeah. We're good. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and tuning into this episode. If you got value out of it, please feel free to message me on Instagram at Sarah Monica photo. That's Sarah, no H Monica with a K photo to let me know. I get so freaking energized hearing from others that what I've said has had a positive impact on their lives. Also make sure to hit subscribe to the shine and thrive podcast to never miss an episode. I'm so grateful for you and I'm sending you all the productive vibes your way so you have the best week ever.